Are you serious? Open your Bible to Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Get a cup of coffee and get ready because Christians are being arrested right in front of the White House. What? For freedom of speech is the crime. Does that make sense? Just hang on a minute. Are you serious? Acts 5.29, the Bible says, Then Peter and other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Now, here's what's going on in front of the White House over the weekend. Uh, police have stopped the praying outside the White House a group of like-minded pro-lifers defending life launched a Washington, D.C. prayer rally known for members, uh, knowing that members could be arrested, but asserting it is worth it because the future of religious freedom in America is at risk. And I must agree with that. By just, And I'm going to tell you why. Not because these guys got arrested from the White House. But because of the Mus innocence of Muslims YouTube video that the White House tried to say sparked the entire uh, attack on the U.S. consulate in Libya, burn as the Muslim, radical Islamic Muslim, those menaces, ministers of Mecca, the mayhem, the madness, the meanness, the misguided message. As they burnt down the U.S. consulate, they assassinated the United States ambassador to Libya, Christopher Stevens, and three other diplomats, including two ex-Navy SEALs. The White House said the reason it happened was because of the little low-budget, 13-minute Innocence of Muslims film. And they said the film was made by a Jewish man named David Bissell. Here's the truth. The consulate was already targeted by Al-Qaeda to be attacked on 9-11, which they did. And Christopher Stevens, the ambassador of the United States to Libya, was already on a target list for assassination by Al-Qaeda. Even Christopher Stevens knew this and feared for his life and asked for further protection doing his job in Libya, of which he never got. The consulate was burnt to the ground. He was murdered. Four of them died at the hands of Al-Qaeda on 9-11. The White House's response to what happened is, it's all because of this film on YouTube. YouTube refused to pull the film, stating that it was within guidelines of the people's freedom of speech and within the company guidelines of freedom of speech. So the White House blamed the burning down of the consulate on the film, but nobody even heard of the film. Matter of fact, I've got a hundred YouTube videos with more views on it than that film had. Are you serious? Nobody cared. Now, two weeks later, the White House is backtracking and admitting this was an Al-Qaeda attack. But if they would have admitted it in the beginning and not spoken about the film, no one would have ever known about the film, and the rest of the U.S. embassies in the world would have never been attacked. There wouldn't be flags burning in the streets. There wouldn't be an outcry for the freedom of religion to be squelched in America. Now, would there? That's the real truth. And nobody wants to handle the truth, because really, here's the deal, folks. Nobody wants to speak the truth. Well, let's just take a look at these folks. I want to thank Stephen of Oklahoma for getting this to me this morning. Way to get my blood boiling before I can get my first cup of coffee drunk, Stephen. Way to go, Stephen! Anyway, the future of religious freedom in America is at stake. The, the group is quoting Acts chapter 5, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men when being challenged about their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The article goes on to say, The Obama administration's they are protesting the Obama administration's health and human services mandate requiring that employer-provided health insurance cover birth control measures. 
Oh, quote, Obamacare will force institutions, churches, and individuals to purchase abortion-inducing drugs and pay for sterilization and abortion in direct opposition to their beliefs, their conscience, and the historic teachings of the church. Now, this is a primarily a group of pro-lifer Catholics. With the recent Supreme Court ruling affirming President Barack Obamacare, the future of religious freedom in America is at risk and in grave danger of being entirely wiped out. On Saturday, the, tw uh, the 22, and that would have been uh, September 29th, 2012, 22 members of the group knelt and prayed on the sidewalk in front of the White House. They were all arrested by Capitol Police. I have a picture of it. I'd like to know why they were arrested, really. I realize they were not on... This is a picture of them. Let's get a... Uh, let's get... Okay. I, you can see they were quietly kneeling, holding their sign, and praying. This is all they were doing, folks. They weren't shouting. They weren't disturbing the peace. They weren't causing a big ruckus. Oh, and they definitely weren't acting like the Occupy Wall Street crowd. What? They weren't p pitching tents, throwing trash, getting drunk and high and puking on the side of the street. They were simply kneeling quietly and praying for the nation. Their crime prayer. Their crime freedom of speech. Their cause, freedom of speech. See, folks, let's just get realistic. There's nobody really wants to tell the truth about what's going on. And I'm not blaming the Democrats or the Republicans here. I'm blaming all of them. I'm blaming the Supreme Court. I'm blaming everybody who won't stand with these folks and stand up for the religious freedoms and freedom of speech. Now, even if you're not a Christian, even if you're an atheist, I know you believe in freedom of speech and you don't want that taken. You don't want those people arrested. You don't want the uh, Occupy Wall Street crowd arrested. And you don't want the uh, Innocence of Muslims guy who made the film arrested, not for freedom of speech. You don't want the freedom of speech attacked. The group says the only basis for their arrest is in the sidewalk in front of the White House was the fact that they were in a restricted zone. But that's not what they're charged with. Okay? Now, Father Frank Provone of the Priest for the Life, we still stu stood for life and religious freedoms and hundreds of cities. Today, we do so at the President's House. I'm delighted to be here. So, folks, we, we're, we need to pray for America. I mean, if I'm the President of the United States, here's something I'm going to tell you right now I'd have done. I would have said to my Capitol Police, don't arrest them, people. They have a right to go down there and pray. I know they're in a restricted zone. Let them stay and let them pray. We let that crowd hang out at Wall Street for months, trash in the place, because they had a freedom of speech. And it was restricted zones. We let them do it. Leave these people alone. Don't make a scene. But that's not what the current administration wants. That's not the message they want to send. They want to send a message straight at the Christians. Shut your mouth. That's what they want us to hear. Shut your mouth. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Here's a voice crying out of the cornfields of Indiana saying, Oh, no, I'm going to cry loud and spare not. I'm going to lift up my voice like a trumpet and show the people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins, as the scripture says. I'm going to say right now, we need to pray for America. We're in a small window to repent, folks, and that window is closing fast. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? We're living in the last days. Absolutely, it's the apocalyptic hour. Pray for the President of the United States. Pray for our leaders. We're not against any of them, but we are for freedom of speech. And pray that the Supreme Court will understand this and stand with the people 
of the people, the government, for the people.